Today we're going to go through the best settings for the ASUS ROG Strix XG32UCWMG. These settings should also apply to the WG model as well, so the 165Hz version. We're configuring the 240Hz version here, but the settings should be the same hopefully between both screens so you can try them there as well. We'll set the screen up in both SDR and HDR modes as well as look at things like the OLED care options and gaming settings. We've got the screen at its factory default settings to start with. The only thing that we've altered is to change the power setting from power saving mode to performance mode. That gives you full access to all of the controls and the full brightness capabilities of the screen as well. Before we do anything, we'll look at the OLED care options because these apply across both the SDR and HDR modes. You'll see that most of these settings are actually turned on and enabled by default. You can turn any of them off that you find distracting or problematic, but we'd recommend leaving as many of them turned on as possible to help mitigate the risk of image retention. The ones that you might find distracting potentially could be the outer dimming control, which may dim the edges of the screen and produce a bit of a vignetting effect. If you find that problematic, turn that setting off. The other one is the screen move, which shifts the image a few pixels every now and again. If you find that problematic or annoying, you could turn that down to light or turn it off altogether. The Neo Proximity Sensor, the motion sensor that will turn the screen off when you're not using it, can be set up here as well. That's actually turned off by default. So you can set your viewing position, your viewing distance there, or you can use the tailored mode, which will guide you through a couple of quick steps to configure it for your specific viewing position. We'd recommend turning that on. You might as well have that enabled to turn the screen off when you're not using it and you move away. So we'll configure the screen first of all in SDR mode. And there's a couple of options here in terms of which color space you want to work with. The first thing that we'll do though is we'll enable the uniform brightness mode. Now uniform brightness will give you a consistent brightness regardless of the image that you're viewing in SDR applications. So as you resize and move windows around, you won't get any annoying fluctuations in brightness. We prefer to have that turned on, but you can turn it off if you're interested in boosting the brightness a little bit for SDR gaming and multimedia. You can get a decent brightness bump, but you will have to live with some ABL dimming if you turn uniform brightness off. So for desktop applications, we'll leave that turned on. We're going to move the brightness up a little bit to a setting of 40. That will give us a luminance of around 120 nits. You can set this higher to 55 for 150 nits or 78 for 200 nits. You can set this at whatever you like, whatever's comfortable for your ambient lighting conditions and user preferences. They're just a couple of guideline luminance values in case you wanted to configure it to any of those. We'll leave it on 40 for now for 120 nits. We'll come back to talk about OLED anti-flicker in a moment. In this section, you can leave contrast on its default 80. There's no need to change anything else in there at all. And then the main configuration is really gonna come in the color section and primarily with the color space setting. So you've got a choice here between wide gamut, DCI-P3, which is actually very close to the wide gamut mode anyway, and sRGB. If you want to have the most vivid and saturated colors, then stick to the wide gamut mode. That will look more colorful and saturated for SDR gaming and the multimedia and that kind of thing. And if you prefer just a generally more colorful image, then we think most people will want to stick with the wide gamut mode. If you do that, then stick to the color temp setting of 6,500K. That's very close to the target anyway. And you can leave gamma on 2.2 as well. No need to change anything else in the other sections. If you find the colors look too saturated and too vivid in the wide gamut mode and you want a higher level of accuracy for working with sRGB or SDR content, you can switch here to the sRGB mode and that will clamp the color space back to sRGB. Color temp and gamma can remain as they are. There's no change to those. All it's doing is reducing the color space back to sRGB. Another option might be to stick with the wide gamut mode and then use our calibrated ICC profile, which is designed to clamp the color space in color aware applications, but also offers some improvements to things like the gamma curve, shadow detail, and the color temperature. You can find a link to that ICC profile in the description below, and it's available in our database now. We'll talk about the gaming settings as well while we're in the SDR mode. So there's a few things that you can change or turn on here. Variable refresh rate, you can leave that enabled if you want to use NVIDIA G-Sync or AMD FreeSync. You may want to then experiment with the OLED anti-flicker mode. If you find there's any flickering in your gaming scenarios, you could try the middle or the high settings. They do help improve the VRR flicker a little bit according to our testing. So if you have problems, then you can turn those on or you could just disable VRR altogether if you find it really problematic. 
If you disable VRR, then you can also enable the ELMB setting, the BFI black frame insertion mode. That's available at a fixed 120 Hertz input signal. So if you can only power games up to around 120 Hertz anyway, you may find that it's better to disable VRR and use ELMB to boost your motion clarity back up to 240 Hertz type levels. So that's a really useful feature if you're gaming at lower refresh rates. You can play around with any of the other settings like FPS counters, crosshairs and the likes in that menu there. We've left the screen just on its racing mode. You can use any of the other presets if you want, but configuring the racing mode as we've just done is just as good as using any of the others anyway. Shadow boost, you could turn this up a little bit if you find that shadow detail is too dark in your games. It does seem to brighten some of the dark and mid gray tones. So experiment with that to see if any of those settings help in darker games but we'd leave that turned off for desktop applications and general usage. There's nothing really to change in the system menu other than if you want to turn off this power indicator at the bottom you can turn it off there. Everything else can really stay as it's set up. We switched into HDR mode now by enabling HDR in Windows. As a reminder we'd recommend only enabling HDR in Windows when you're actually going to view HDR content. There's various reasons for that. It's explained in detail in our video that's linked below if you want to know more. There's a few options in HDR mode. You'll see that a lot of sections are now greyed out. The colour section, for instance, is entirely unavailable. But one of the things that we would do first is go into HDR setting and enable the adjustable HDR mode. With adjustable HDR mode now enabled, you've got access to the colour menu and further settings in the image section like brightness. There are four HDR preset modes available. HDR True Black 400 is pretty limited in terms of its brightness, so we think most people will want to use one of the other three modes. Our preference would probably be to use the Gaming HDR mode for PC gaming. It seems to have the better balance in terms of accuracy and brightness, but the Console HDR mode will be more applicable for consoles or where you're using HDIG compliant devices. You can select whichever mode is appropriate and we can configure it from there. The same settings and configuration apply regardless. So we've just used the gaming HDR mode here and one thing we think most people want to do is bump the brightness setting up to 100. That will give you the maximum brightness in HDR with the highest peak brightness highlights and it improves the overall brightness of HDR content. Leave uniform brightness turned off. You don't want that on for HDR. Contrast can stay at 80. And then in the color menu, we're actually gonna make a couple of tweaks here in HDR mode. We're going to move to the user color temperature mode, which gives us access to configure the RGB channels ourselves. We found that helped correct the slightly too blue and green tint to HDR content from the 6500K mode. So we're going to leave red on 100, green we're going to move down to 96, and blue we're going to move down to 96. That returned us a white point much closer to 6500 Kelvin we found, so that helps improve things in HDR quite nicely. So you've got 100, 96, 96 for our RGB channels. And that's it for HDR mode, so we've got brightness on 100, we're using one of the gaming, cinema, or console HDR modes in favor of HDR 400. And we've tweaked the color temperature, as we've just said. So there you go, there's the screen set up in both the SDR and HDR modes. If you found this useful, please give us a quick like below. You can find a link to our calibrated ICC profile available in the description as well. That could be useful for SDR applications for further adjustments and improvements. If you'd like to stay up to date on all of our future monitor content, please remember to hit subscribe below. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you next time.